Hi everybody, I hope you had a lovely break and are now back into the swing of life. <laughs> Everything's gone back to normal now. I mean, kids are back to school, so I'm back crafting and um, yeah, I've been uh, looking into some different types of crafts. I think not just sewing and, uh, you know, making small things. I thought I wanted to make something a little bit different. Um, I've always loved miniature things and uh, I thought it would be an interesting thing to make a book nook. So I don't know if you've ever heard of a book nook, but I'll show you a few examples that I've found. You can Google it. There's so many different <laughs> types of book nooks and different interest levels that you've got. Um, you can find ones from fantasy to sort of like fairy tale to something a bit more realistic. You can get the cottagey types. Um, some people have done books, uh, sort of bookshelves within bookshelves, um, which is a little bit like what I wanted to do. So we're going to be doing that today. It's a little bit different to what I normally do, but I thought this is a crafting channel, so it'd be interesting to see how it turns out. I've only just done half of it because there's so much to do. So I'm not sure how many parts it's going to take um, to complete it, but you know, at least we're getting started and it's all a learning curve. So I do apologize if any of it looks a little bit bad, but I'm trying my best. So let's get started. I'm really excited to do this. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna need some wood to make the basic shape. And if you don't have wood, you can use cardboard. Um, I would recommend layering up your cardboard um, so it's nice and sturdy. Uh, but if you do manage to get hold of some wood, I recommend um, two, mil or, two millimeters or three millimeter plywood um, or, or basswood, um, which you can get from most craft shops and I do recommend that you measure your bookshelf to see that it does fit because that would be so annoying building it and then finding that it doesn't fit. Um, so first thing to do is obviously measure your bookshelf and then we want to build like a rectangle shape. Um, I'm not going to attach all the sides, I'm only attaching three sides to start with because I want to be able to um, access it to decorate it. So what I've done is I've measured halfway from this point here to um, to the end, which was, it was 29 and a half because obviously this um, side panel takes up uh, five, mil uh, five millimeters. So, um, you know, with the total being 30 centimeters, I've just divided that into, into half, obviously bearing in mind that end piece. Um, so if I mark that there, and I've just gone down the middle, marked half way. And that's going to be um, the second story. So, you know, that's gonna obviously be the ground floor, that's gonna be the first floor, uh, and my ceiling will sit here, or first floor will sit there. Um, I'm also gonna mark it onto that side as well, just so I've got a, a, a plumb line to work to. So I thought I'd start by making the window, um, which is going to go at the top here and at the back of the box. And um, I thought what I'll do just to sort of use up what I have, um, I thought what I'd do is use some sceneries which I found in a uh, an old National Trust magazine. I've roughly cut them out just because I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. So I'm gonna cut around them a bit neater. Um, and I thought it would look nice as a, as a, as a, you know, sort of out the window. You won't see the back because it will be, it'll be covered up. But um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I want the house in the background there or if I want just a nice sort of uh, you know, like a scenery, or even, or if I want, um, you know, something a bit more busier that you can, which might draw interest. Uh, obviously, I've taken them from the point of view of 
of, of higher up on a hill or you know not ground level because the perspective has to be right if um, it's from the second story window so yeah so that's my my three pictures obviously I'm, I'm not going to use the whole of that picture it probably be just a smaller section of it but I haven't decided on that yet um, and what I'm going to use for the glass off the window is I've got this uh, piece of plastic which was uh, a drill that I'd bought a little drill a mini drill so I kept the packaging thinking yep I could use that panel there at least <clears throat> to act as the the glass over the window I'm going to use lolly sticks or I do have um, coffee stirrers as well actually I haven't got those out at the moment but I've got coffee stirrers I might even use those if these are a bit too thick I'm thinking that is a little bit too thick for the window frame so possibly the coffee stirrers and um, to make the lattice on the window I'm going to use these here the matchsticks to start with I measured the size that I wanted the window and I've just cut a piece of that uh, plastic out to fit the window size and um, I've decided I want a nice little curve at the top so um, I've just used my compass to draw half a semicircle and I'm going to use that as a guide to um, make the frame of my window. I cut the wood in small angled shapes using my angle cutter here and um, it just helped me to form a curve. I used wood filler to fill in any gaps. When it dried, I sanded it down and I've painted it just plain white and I'm now starting on the lattice that will go in the middle. I've just chopped up some little matchsticks and I'm just fiddling around with them trying to create a inner part of the window. So I glued it all together and um, I decided that I do want a little sort of shelf which will act as a windowsill. I want to create a little bit of depth outside as well. So um, I've taken the scenery and I've, because I want it 3D, I've put it into a curved shape when I've backed it with a little bit of cardboard. Now that will give it a little bit of a 3D shape because whichever angle you look at, you'll be able to see um, a little bit of depth. It won't be a massive amount, but at least it won't just be a flat 2D sort of look. You'll see what I mean when I've done it. I've made it slightly bigger than the window frame just so that it allows um, for me for the bend. I've also painted the window, so that's ready now to be stuck to the um, 
uh, the, the, the scenery, which I will do once it's dry. So now the paint's dried on the window. Um, I've cut out a sort of a false wall that will support the window. So the window's going to go in there. I'm going to glue that in. And that um, will just allow me that extra little bit of space for the curve at the back for the, uh, the fake view. <laughs> um, because obviously it's gonna stick out from the wall. Um, so I want the, the window to be, um, you know, hidden, you know, the back of the window to be hidden. So I've created a false wall for that to happen. And then I'm going to have shelves coming out from this side. So I'm not too worried about having a, a bigger wall. Um, I've also used a bit of filler to sort of tidy up uh, around the edges just so that it's a bit neater and to fill in a gap because I had to add a bit of extra, um, extra wood at the top there. Okay, so I've started to glue the window into the the back of the, um, well, this is the back side of it anyway, just so that it can uh, hold into place. So it's in there now, in the gap. And I'm just spreading the glue around just to make sure it's nice and even. Let's clean that bit off there. And uh, I'll just leave that to dry for a bit and hopefully um, I'll be able to then fill in any, any gaps with the remaining um, paste to the, uh, the, the wood filler. Good old clear nail varnish, eh? gave it a lovely shine and I had it already so I didn't have to go out and buy anything new. So I've marked out where I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut this section out. That's going to be where the um, the ladder comes up. That's going to be bookshelves. That's a little window seat and the window will go there. And that is um, the desk. So just a rough plan, just so I know where to put the flooring and where to um, cut the stair bit or the ladder. I'm not sure if I'm doing stairs or ladders yet, but that's going to go at the end there. Um, and before I glue this into the main um, sort of book nook, I'm going to just prepare this so it's just easier for me. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Okay. So I've cut out the little rectangle that needed to come out and I've marked the opening to where the landing will be. I'm going to use dowels for the, um, the main part of the, the banister and I'm gonna use um, some, probably some cocktail sticks just for the in-between and I'll use coffee stirrers for the top part of the banister. dowels and I'm now going to use little cocktail sticks cut in half to go in between. I'll use a coffee stirrer to act as the base of the banister and it will support the, um, the rungs. I'll also cut the top part at an angle of 45 degrees to create a nice join. I've also cut the top part of the banister off and um, I've glued the little um, cocktail sticks 
to the top of the banister and I've glued the uh, the chunky parts of the banister, the end poles, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> um, I've, I've glued those to the posts where they're going to be and I'm just waiting for it all to dry. I've glued it together but I don't like the bottom of the rungs and how they're not connecting to the base. I didn't cut them very well so um, what I'm going to actually do is redo them and I'm going to cut them to the correct size. <laughs> it looks really awful like this but you get the idea. I'm now ready to attach this second floor to the actual building. So what I've done is drill two small holes um, on either side of the floor and also along the straight edge which will sit along the longest side and then I'll be using um, little cocktail sticks as dowels to attach it to, to, the, to the main walls. Um, if you don't want to do this you could try just gluing it in and just um, using like an extra strong sort of wood glue to make sure that it doesn't move and I'm sure when you've got both well all three sides attached then it won't um, it shouldn't move if you do want to put heavier things in there then I do suggest that you put some sort of support underneath um, to sort of counteract the weight So put a support from the middle there just to keep the bottom and the top supported just so that that doesn't start to bow there you go that's the side panel I'm starting on the flooring which is basically um, some of these uh, stirring sticks these coffee stirrers um, which you can get on Amazon quite cheap um, excuse my pencil <laughs> Um, and I've just started to, to cut them down like this into um, sections of I think a third, just, just under two inches. I think they're four and a half centimetres from memory and uh, in fact let me check, I believe they are, yeah 4.5 centimetres and then I'm just alternating them like this to create a nice lattice uh, or parquet flooring as they would say and it is literally just taking one uh, and alternating the pattern so we've got one going that way one will go that way and one will go that way and then just making sure I'm doing it evenly like that And that will then go up here so I've got quite a way to go as you can see <laughs> I'm going to start gluing it soon because I've started cutting out the top bit there and I thought if I um, I do need to tidy that top pick up top end up there because that's a bit too um, a bit too long there I'm not too worried about it being perfect because my bookshelf's gonna go there anyway so it doesn't really bother me that it's not perfectly even and it's going to be hidden but if you're going right up against an edge then I would recommend gluing it all together wait for the glue to dry and then perhaps um, cutting it afterwards I'm not really sure what to advise in this situation but it is very difficult to get them perfectly even um, otherwise you could snip them individually um, you know by marking a pencil line which I which is what I did on this section here but as I say, I'm not too fussed because it is going to be hidden behind a bookshelf, bookshelf so uh, I'm not too worried. So anyway, I will continue all the way down and then I will cut off any end bits um, that are poking out and just neaten it up. So I won't bore you by letting you watch me cut every single piece, but as I say, I've shown you how I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the pattern, okay?
Okay, I finally laid it all down. I've left the parts which will be covered with bookshelves and the window area, so I'm not too worried about going all the way up to the wall. It's just going to be expended energy that I don't need to use. So um, this is as far as I go with the flooring. I just now need to, I just need to move on to the next step, which is to fill it in and sand it down. Filled it in, you can see, and it's been drying for a little while. About two hours, and um, I'm just trying to neaten up this little part where the little stairs will go or the ladder. And um, I've left the edges as I've shown you before because I'm putting bookshelves there, and I didn't see the point in wasting a lot more time because it is a slow process. So I've just left those empty, um, but of course, I've done the parts that will be shown. So once it's all neatened up, I'm going to sand it all down now um, and it will look a lot different when it's, uh, when it's done. <laughs> Here it is all sanded down and um, I've, I've capped off the end of where the stairwell is just so it looks a bit neater. And I'm quite happy with that. It's now ready for varnishing. Okay, so I've given inside on some of the walls there just the walls that you're going to see um, give them a bit of a white coat and uh, I know it's not a great first coat but um, I will probably go over it again just so that it's a nice a nice decent coat of white paint um, and I've also gone over my little banisters okay and that's it and I use this stuff um, it's called Gesso, white acrylic gesso, and it was a fiber from uh, good old The Works. Um, I'm sure you can buy it from elsewhere, but I find this is quite a good one. And it's a bit thicker than normal acrylic paint, which obviously gives it um, a bit of a thicker coat, even though it doesn't look it from here. But um, it's a lot thicker than using just normal acrylic paint on wood, on naked wood. So I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I'm going to stick the window part in at the top. I bought these square sort of dowel um, sticks, I think you could call them, um, from Amazon and I'm going to use these to give my, uh, my window a bit more sort of uh, depth so that it's able to glue down properly onto the actual uh, book nook and I want to make sure it's a bit more sturdy so this will act as a nice little um, sort of strengthener I guess. Okay so I've glued the window into place I've just got the uh, walls painted and my little banister's ready right there I've just left that underneath for a moment. Also made this little mini shelving unit here um, which will go on the back shelf there. It's going to be glued on like that. Um, I will show you how to make that. I'm going to make another one which will go on this side of the wall which, which is why I didn't do all that bit and um, also along there as well so it'd be like a little corner shelving unit as well. I haven't explained how I made the shelving unit yet but I'll do that on a later video. Okay so I'm starting on the lighting. I've turned the whole thing to the side and um, I've placed where I want the battery pack at the top so that's the first floor pack is going to be directly behind it. I'm going to put something there just to support it um, and I've just drilled a hole in the ground floor there because I want to pass this um, LED wire light through it and I'm going to try and um, uh, light the whole thing with this. Hopefully I have enough if not, I will might have to go and get some tea lights or something. Um, the, you know, the, the artificial tea lights and maybe use those as well. But hopefully I should have enough wire. So I can't 
hold the phone and feed it all through at the same time so please bear with me I'm trying to film it as I go but um oh yeah I'll show you the other side of the hole so that's the hole that I've marked there and we go in and we go up and you can just see the little hole there so it's quite a small hole um but uh it, the light should fit through it I'm hoping otherwise I'll make it a little bit bigger if I need to okay I've also got this black tape I forgot to mention which is like a um uh, insulating tape and it will cover up any lights that I don't want shining out brightly so um, you know at least I'll have a way to cover up any in-between lights okay so I've fed it all through and it's come out there and I'm just going to put a little bit of tape here at the top just to cover up the hole like that so it's covered up and hopefully there won't be a lot of light coming through the the hole now so yeah that will be covered up anyway but I've got all the wiring through there now and I'm just going to turn it around so I can see what I'm doing and I'll show you what I'm going to do next okay so what I'm going to do now is decide how I'm going to work, how I'm going to position everything. So the, I, in my fireplace, I want about four of these little lights. So I'm allowing four there, and then I'm just working out how many I'm gonna to have to sacrifice. So we've got four here. I'm gonna to have to sacrifice at least one there. Okay, so after a lot of faffing around, I finally worked out what I'm going to do. So I've sort of gathered together a little bit for the fire area and um, I've just bunched up a few lights and I've secured um, the, the other piece here with a little bit of tape just so that it doesn't move around too much. And that's where I'm going to have the central display bit. I've put a bit of sellotape here at the back here just to hold everything in place and also covered up the hole from the back um, just to hold the wires in and also to stop any light shining through. 
I'm now going to feed the wire over the top so that I can then do the first floor as well. I want to give the impression that there's daylight shining through the window um, because bearing in mind when it is a, a box it's all going to be closed off the window will look dark um, which won't be in keeping with the fact that it's daytime outside in the in the in the scene so um, I want to put a couple of lights or at least one light at the back there just to shine through the window a little bit to make it look like it's daylight For the main light I want to make like a chandelier and I'm going to use um, a few different arms. I think I'm going to do either an 8 or a 10 armed chandelier. So I'm just going to twist two lights together and um, create arms which will later be created to make to look like a chandelier. At the moment I'm just creating the arm bits. temporarily stuck it to the side wall just because I'm not ready to make the chandelier yet and it's just nice and neat out of the way. I've also looped together the spare little wire, that's wire at the side just because I'm thinking I might use that for something else so I'm just going to keep that available at the side here. That's it for now. I think we've done quite a bit already and we've got all the basics in. So part two will be a little bit more detailed and hopefully we shall get this book nook finished pretty soon. Until next time, I'll see you soon.